Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. So, we took our getOps command, and we attached it to a while loop. And what this did for us was, whenever the getOps command found anything that began with a dash in front, it would return a true value. And when it ran out of flags, or when it found something that wasn't a flag, it would return a false value and we'd stop executing the code that was inside of the do to done portion of our while loop. And this was very useful. However, the only thing it did was it just printed out what flag we actually entered in on the command line. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to find a way to take whatever flag the user entered on the command line and use that information to set a variable inside of our script such that later on we can act upon the value of the variable. So this is our code and we've just defined the name of the program and the optional flags and some examples here, same examples we had last time. And the other thing that we're doing today is we're introducing op arg variable. It's a reserved variable by Cornshell and it holds the value of any flag you entered, whether it's a valid flag or an invalid flag. Now this will come useful when we are looking at invalid flags. Next thing I did was I created a variable called usage and it just defines the name of the program and the optional valid flags. And we're going to use this when a user enters an invalid flag to notify them, hey, this is the actual way to run the program. Next thing I did was I created a set x variable, an x set variable, assigned 0 to it, and a y set variable, and assigned 0 to it. What that will do is if the user enters a dash x, we're going to change this to 1. If the user enters a dash y, we're going to change this to 1. And then later on in our code, we will actually have concrete evidence that someone entered a dash x or a dash y. So later on in our code, we can say, if x set is equal to 1, then perform some action. If y set is equal to 1, then perform some action. That's how you translate a flag that the user enters on the command line into actual if statement code. So here is what the code finally looks like. We still have our get ops and we have the x and y and we have our colon to indicate invalid flags and it must be at the beginning and we have our variable called value and this statement is attached to a while loop so whenever you have a flag, whether it's a valid flag or, or an invalid flag, getOps returns true. We then go inside of the code between the do to the done. Inside of that, we have a case statement. And the way the case statement works is it looks at one variable. And it tests it against several different possibilities, x, y, and question mark. And the first one it finds is true, it executes that, and then it goes down to the bottom of the case statement, which was ends with E S A C, which then will mess back up to the top of the while loop. So if the variable value is set to X, then we end up going to this portion of our case statement which just says print that the user entered a dash x and this is where we set our variable x set to 1 and as always you end your choice of a variable selection with a double semicolon that way it knows to stop here go down to the end of the case statement and then continue code from the done which will actually bring you back up to right here if the user enters a Y, 
then we do similar action. Now, right here, this is what handles the question mark. And once again, if the user enters anything, a, a flag that is not a dash X or a dash Y, then a question mark gets assigned a value. Now, the reason why we have a slash question mark is, as you may remember, question mark by itself is a wild card. And we don't want it to mean wild card. We want it to mean an actual question mark. So you have to prepend the question mark with a backslash. And the backslash adds to or removes from the meaning of the next character. In this case, we're removing from the meaning of the next character because normally a question mark means wild card. So if the value within variable, if the value within value is question mark, then we tell them flag op arg. What op arg is, is every time get ops finds a flag, whether it's a valid flag or an invalid flag, it assigns the value to op arg. So if we entered a dash k, then k would be put right here. So if you enter an invalid flag, we will print flag. In this case, it would be a K is not a valid flag. And then we're going to print a blank line. And then we're going to print our usage variable. This lets the user know, hey, here's the valid way to run this command. And then we are going to exit from our script. And this will kick you out of, our, out of the script. It will stop execution from that point in the script. It won't go any further. And in the past, I may have said that the exit command was a Unix command. It is actually a corn shell command. So after we're done processing all of our flags, we go down to after the done statement. And what do we have here? We just have some code that says, if x set is 1, then print x set is 1. If y set is 1, then print y set is 1. If this was an actual program, we'd actually do some useful code inside of here. But this is how you translate a dash x into actual code. And this is how you would translate a dash y into actual code. And the names x set and y set, I just chose them at random. You can use whatever you want. Now, looking at some examples of the program running, I entered the name of the program with a no flags. And so getOps was false from the beginning, so we never went inside the while loop. And because x set and y set were never set to 1, we never printed out anything about x set and y set being set to 1. In the next example, I just entered a dash x flag. And this right here was the code inside of the case statement right here. And as you can see, x value was x. So therefore, we printed enter dash x. And we end up setting x set to 1. And as you can see, after we were done processing all the flags, it hit that if x set is 1, then just print x set is 1. So we did that. Next, I just entered dash x dash y x. And as you can see, it did in fact go inside of the case statement. It printed dash x, entered dash x, entered dash y, entered dash x. And then afterwards, it went into those two if statements because we did set x set and y set to 1. So it printed that stuff out. And lastly, I entered an invalid flag. So what happened was the first time we hit an x, it went into the case statement. It said you entered an x. Then it got to the dash k. and it set value equal to question mark. So we ended up executing this portion of the code, which said that flag k is not a valid flag. It printed the usage, and then it exited from the script. 
which as you can see is what happened. Flag K is not a valid flag and it printed the usage and it exited from the script. It never did execute the code, it never did process the dash Y flag because it stopped execution right after it hit the K.